Last year, I discussed the many successful transfers of players moving from the Championship to the Premier League. All of the players that were rumoured transfers in that video have since made the step up, so how have they performed in the Premier League? And of course, let's look at the latest additions from the Championship. First of all, then let's revisit that video from June 2019 and talk about the players who were still in the Championship at the time, but have since been snapped up by clubs in the Premier League. Beginning with Neil Morpai, his last season at Brentford saw him score 25 in 43 league games, so for teams in the Premier League looking to sign a goal scorer, they had a great option in Morpai. It was Brighton who eventually came in for him in August, spending 25 million on the Frenchman. His debut season at this level saw him score 10 and assist 3, featuring in 37 of 38 games in the league, only missing out out on West Ham away. The 10 goals he scored made him the top goal scorer that season for the club, becoming an important player in the team for that reason. However, we know he can score more. Under Graham Potter, with his expansive way of play, there is great potential for him to score more. In the top 20 list for the most shots had in the Premier League last season, Morpai was second bottom for the goal conversion rate with 15.4%. Most of all, he'll want to be scoring more, and now, with the season under his belt, he'll be raring to go each game to improve on that tally. And well, he's definitely started in the right manner. He scored four goals in the seven games played so far, along with one assist too. He should have scored against Crystal Palace with the six shots that he had, but it shows that he is a player that teammates are looking for when creating chances. With a bright start, it's looking promising for more pie this season, so let's see how many he'll bag in the coming months. Two players to mention now, Jared Bowen and Saeed Ben Rama. Both of the attackers have been signed by West Ham United. Bowen was a player who had been scoring and assisting for fun in the championship, season upon season, and this is a sign of great quality. He'd been ready for the step up for a long time. Before joining in January, he scored 16 and assisted 6 in 29 games for Hull, finishing as the 8th top goalscorer last season, even though he'd left in January. West Ham had been crying out for more effective attacking quality. With Bowen, you get a goalscorer and a chance creator on the right wing, and he'd been doing it consistently in the Championship. Since his rival, he's fitting fairly well on the right wing, overall scoring 4 and assisting 4 in the 21 games he's played for them so far. Whereas last season he scored once and assisted 4 times, he started this season with 3 goals, proving on the pitch his flexible way of playing. And more goals, I'm sure, will be on the way with the signing of left winger Saeed Ben Rama, who will be able to create chances for Bowen. I've talked many times on this channel about Ben Rama and the qualities he has. His profile has risen over the last few months with links to Premier League clubs and through clips of his incredible skills and goals. We don't know how he'll take to the Premier League just yet, but from what we've seen in the Championship, he'll for sure bring excitement and entertainment to West Ham. And with him is once again the fact he's performed consistently consistently in his time at Brentford and now looks more than ready for the step up in this league. 2018-19 to saw him score 11 and assist 17 in all competitions. 2019-20 to he scored 17 and assisted 10. Outstanding numbers as he linked up with Watkins and Mbumo and I'm sure he'll be hoping for the same type of link ups at West Ham. Antonio has been fantastic under Moyes, Sushek a presence in the box, so with Ben Rama being able to provide service for these men it could be where they find some goals. His first goal contribution came in the game versus Fulham as assisting for Thomas Suchek, which ended up being the winner in that game. Next up then is Che Adams. He was firing in the championship with Birmingham, and the 18-19 season was a clear indication that a Premier League club would snap him up. He featured in every game in the league for Birmingham that season, scoring 22 goals and assisting five times. It was Southampton that signed him for 15 million in the summer of 2019. He struggled for Southampton, not scoring until July against Manchester City in the restart of football, along with a goal against Bournemouth and two against Sheffield United. Now I've just discussed the partnership of Adams and Ings before, as well as in my last Premier League Roundup video. And the reason for this is because we're starting to see Adams improve for Southampton, finding his role in the team and forming a relationship with Danny Ings. He is adapting to Southampton's style of play well and is now a player that is more often than not putting in good performances for the team. Unlike some of the other signings who have seen hit the ground running straight away, Che Adams looks to be a little bit different, in the fact that it's now his second season and we're now starting to see why he was signed. However, with that being said, he's playing in a good team that is overall playing great football and we're seeing that with them sitting fourth in the league. Ings is out with an injury so last game we saw them line up with Che Adams as a lone striker where he was able to score the opening goal. As Southampton continues to get results and Adams continues to score more, this transfer is looking better and better as the games go on this season. Another striker to join from the championship is Ollie Watkins. He signed from Brentford for £28 million. He was one of the players that featured in my video focusing on the recruitment system at Brentford and at the time he'd scored 10 goals in the championship 2000 
2019 to 20 season. He ended that season with 25 goals to his name, making him the second top goal scorer. So as Brentford missed out on promotion, Dean Smith looked into the championship at his previous club and brought in the striker that scored him 14 goals and 8 assists when he was managing him. Under Dean Smith and up until last season, Watkins would start on the left wing and occasionally on the right too, more under the management of Thomas Frank though. Then last season, where he found a lot of goal scoring success, he was starting as the striker with Ben Rama and Mbumo either side of him. So for Dean Smith, this was a transfer that made total sense with past experience of knowing how to use him and his transition into a striker after he left Brentford, it was the perfect signing. In all competitions so far for Aston Villa, he scored 8 goals and got 1 assist in 10 games. He starts as a striker but has been drifting onto the left side to find space and has been able to link up well with Jack Grealish. Grealish has assisted for Watkins 3 times so we're already getting signs that this partnership will be important for Villa throughout the season. We need to see more from Watkins as the campaign progresses but already scoring more than what Jay Adams did in all competitions last season is looking to be a good move. Staying on the topic of Aston Villa, they also signed Matty Cash from Nottingham Forest in a deal worth £16 million. He started fantastically and has played a solid part in their good start to the season, making the most tackles per 90 with 3.5 and the most interceptions per 90 with 3.2. Villa conceded the second most goals in the league last season so they had to dip into the transfer market to improve that somehow. They looked into the championship to find a right back and sign Nottingham Forest player of the season. The defensive improvement does come a lot down to the coaching staff and you can watch my last video on Villa to find out how they've started so well this season. Next is Eberichi Eze who is the youngest player out of the players discussed in this video at the age of 22. Last season at QPR was a breakthrough one for him playing at attacking midfield and as a left winger he scored 14 and assisted 8. A player with a great eye for goal arriving late in the box playing behind the striker. I made a comparison before to Delhi Ali as there is some similarities there. Most impressively he made the most successful dribbles with 136 just above Saeed Ben Rama. And his eye for goal shows in the amount of shots that he had, 77 which is only 5 less than what Ollie Watkins had. It was Crystal Palace that signed him for £20 million but he's taken a little longer to bed into the team. He's played 6 of their 7 Premier League games but only 3 of them were starts. And it was the game versus Leeds United where we've seen the best of him in a Palace shirt, scoring a brilliant free kick and assisting from a corner. He also completed the most attacking third passes in that match, so showing the influence he had on the team. Palace may have been able to find another player in a similar style to Zaha, wanting to take on players, score goals and can take set pieces. After this display, it might be that he begins to start more games and I'm really interested to see how he can develop in the Premier League. Also what I mentioned in last year's video was the players on loan in the Championship and what could possibly be next for them. While three of them were Chelsea players, Tammy Abraham, Mason Mount and Fikayo Tomori. Abraham has been able to find a place in the team at Chelsea under Lampard and scored 18 in all competitions last year. A great sign of development, showing what he could do at Aston Villa and then returning to Chelsea doing the same thing, scoring goals. Mason Mount, obviously the big help there was that Lampard knew what Mount could do through managing him at Derby. He played in 53 games for Chelsea last season, clocking up 3,700 minutes and became an important player for Lampard, using him when needed, starting or coming off the bench. So it shows that the loan in the Championship gave him that experience and development, as well as Tamori, the one who's played the least since his return to Chelsea. However, he did start 11 games in a row in the first half of the season, so Lampard got used from him then. He in fact turned down a move to West Ham in the summer, saying that he wants to improve more to get into the team, play games and get experience. I think his long-term future will be elsewhere if the game time doesn't start increasing at Chelsea. Then the other loanee was Leicester City's Harvey Barnes. He was recalled from West Brom in January 2019 after putting in impressive performances in the Championship. Since his return to Leicester, he's been given a lot of game time and the improvement in his game can be seen. Last season scoring 6 and assisting 8, but arguably he really should have scored more. And the same goes for this season too, he's joined 4th for the most shots on target with 10 but only 2 goals so far. Otherwise he has shown why he deserves to be in the team. This season so far for Leicester, the most successful dribbles and the highest progressive distance with the ball. This shows that when he gets the ball he's looking to take it up the pitch, running at the opposition and causing problems with his pace. Comment below, out of the players mentioned, who do you enjoy watching play the most? I recommend that you don't miss out on future videos. Subscribe to Route 1 and like the video if you did enjoy.